Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it's time to have a look at another dev blog for the update 1.101, which should actually be here in War Thunder pretty soon. Now, update 1.101 has a ton of mechanics being added to it, uh, stuff like volumetric shells, stuff such as uh, the semi-active radar homing missiles, there's a lot of stuff to look at uh, which looks really cool. But there's also a ton of vehicles uh, which are coming to the game, which at least for me, I'm very much excited for. One of them is the Pika. Peacock. The Peacock Carvet, uh, Corvette, sorry, which you can see right here, and it is a new ship which is coming to the game for the British tree, and it's an incredibly modern machine. Uh, it doesn't really offer too much different from what we've seen before, but it definitely offers it in a different package. So what is the Peacock class? Well, it's a set of five Corvettes which were built for the Royal Navy in the 80s, and uh, basically the mid-80s, between 1983 and 1985, they produced these and they were specifically designed for operations in the waters around Hong Kong. Uh, this was to allow for effective service in the tropical climates, therefore they were fitted with stuff such as air conditioning, which is always nice, and also the ability to remain at sea even during typhoons, which must have been quite scary. And then when they were completed, all five of them were assigned to the 6th Patrol Craft Squadron, which operated uh, out of Hong Kong, and during their service they would basically just be a military presence in the area. They were used uh, to fight stuff such as illegal immigration and also smuggling uh, into Hong Kong. And uh, after Hong Kong was returned to China in July of 1997, three of the Peacock Corvettes were subsequently sold to the Philippine Navy, and then the other two were actually sold to the Irish Naval Service in 1988. All of these are still active in service with their respective navies, which is pretty cool. You know, obviously it's quite a modern machine uh, with, I suppose, modern sensibilities. So what is the key selling point of this machine. Well, it has a 76 millimeter on the front of it. It's its only gun. Um, it doesn't have any secondaries. Just has the 76 millimeter. But it is the o the auto cannon. Now you can find this gun on stuff like the automatic. You can find uh, this gun on many other naval vessels in the game. The Spaviero is probably the one which is most famous for it. But there are a few more vessels with this, and it's very much known as a cannon that can output an absolute ton of damage. Now, obviously, it is not a hundred millimeter or more so it doesn't hull break machines but because of its rapid fire it's very easy to annihilate PT boats uh, very quickly because of the fact that they don't have any armor and this thing can just chew through them with AP uh, sorry with HE it does get access to AP and it also gets access to a HEVT shell which is going to be key for this vessel because of the fact that well it doesn't get any other armament so you're going to have to use this at, uh, to go after sea targets air targets, land targets, whatever targets are in front of you, this is the gun that is going to have to be used. And the actual uh, first stage uh, ammo rack, I suppose you'd call it, is uh, quite large for this machine. Uh, it's larger than some of the others uh, that we've seen from the 76mm, so that means that you'll be able to keep up that fire rate uh, quicker than uh, some of the other machines, but the overheating of the gun is still present, so that is, you know, a bit of an issue. But the other thing about this machine is because it only has the 76mm and it doesn't really have anything else, this thing is actually coming into the British tree at rank 2 and it's going to be at the end of parts of the tech tree after the fair miles which are there. So at 3.3, which at least what it was on the dev server, that 76mm is going to be incredibly potent to go after the battle boats or the PT boats that it's going to see around the place place should be completely fine with dealing with the majority of machines that it runs into and also means that 3.3 it does have the ability to see destroyers and at least you know the 76 millimeter does do a little bit against those machines one of the problems with this machine though is it doesn't really have a lot of armor if any at all and it also has a crew which is in the 30s so this means that the survivability of this is not very large because of the fact that it is large 
pitch and because of the fact that it doesn't have too many um, too many uh, crew members it should be very easy to annihilate this machine incredibly quickly especially uh, since you know the bridge is so big it's very easy to hit that area so knocking out stuff like the steering gear is going to be very very easy to do then artillery exists I can't even imagine trying to deal with artillery in this thing and one of the problems that stuff like the flower class and the aisle class also deal with even though they do have secondaries planes um <laughs> the flower class is a bomb magnet uh, it's also a torpedo magnet because of its slow approach and because of the fact that it is very uh you know very lumbersome around the water that's probably going to be exactly the same issue that the peacock have uh, has the peacock has uh, pretty big engines it has two diesel engines which give it around 14,000 horsepower but the problem is this thing can only go 25 knots or 46 kilometers an hour so so even in something like arcade where you do get boosted statistics it's still going to be lumbersome around the place and that's why I think the general playstyle of this machine especially on the maps that we've seen even the new one uh, which is coming for naval I think a lot of people are going to use this as a corner peeker what I mean by this is you stick out the front uh, of the ship from behind a rock, you hide the rest of it behind the rock and you line up the 76mm because it's on the front to just keep popping targets from around the rock. So therefore you try and defend, you know, your bridge so nobody can shoot it while you are shooting other machines. It should work pretty well. Uh, it does mean that you do expose your ammo rack though. Everything is below uh, that uh, turret unfortunately in the front. So yeah, that might be a bit of a problem. And yeah, this thing does have 39 crew. So at least it's, you know, nearly 40. But it's giving me flashbacks of when I was grinding out the Italian tech tree. Rank 1 and Rank 2 of Italy really doesn't have a lot of crew members on any of their machines. And this means that uh, even though you have very good firepower and also you only really have one primary weapon most of the time, it really depends on who sees who's first and who gets the guns on target first. And I really hope that's not the deal with this peacock. And I think the only way to be able to try and uh, try and change that fact is obviously through the pay the playstyle of, as I said, corner peeking. This means that trying to be aggressive, trying to go towards cap zones, trying to go towards points is probably going to be met with aggression and it's going to be met with a lot of fire which will knock you out incredibly quickly which is a bit of a problem of course uh, but at least a rank two you know you'll be able to one well not maybe one shot but maybe two shot stuff like PT boats or at least put them into a position where they don't have enough crew to be able to deal with you know, with the overall, uh, with uh, being able to repair or, so, or uh, you know, put out fires and stuff like that. So at least there's that. And it is kind of nice to see these uh, different ships or different boats in the game. It seems like we're going more and more modern when it comes to uh, War Thunder. And um, the fact that the ships are being represented in this way, even at the mid tiers, I think is really cool. We've seen stuff such as the Destroyer S courts for Japan. Even another one got past the developers, uh, which, or at least I believe it's a destroyer escorts. It's another modern one, uh, but we're getting, you know, two more which are being added to the game. One old, one new for Japan. And we're also getting a more modern machine for the British here. Maybe it's a trend uh, that we're going to see a lot more of these modern machines, and I'd be completely fine with that. You know, the Soviets have some really cool frigates, uh, which are very much modern. We have a few of them in the game, you know, stuff like the 159, the 35, and I'm sure there'll be many more to come. And the idea of having these machines, which are lightly armored, you know, heavy guns on the front, maybe not the fastest in the business but can put out a ton of firepower these excite me because of the fact that I prefer you know naval arcade for me naval arcade is very much the place to go and the reason for this is because you get to run around, you know, like a crazy person, just keep firing and have a bit of fun and kind of turn the brain off. The actual, I don't know, competitive side of naval doesn't really excite me or doesn't really interest me too much. But being in a vessel like the Peacock, where you can just, you know, lumber around and bonk, 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 and then bonk, bonk, bonk over there sounds extremely fun to me. One of the problems with it, though, is since it is going to be a machine at the end of a research, 
research tree, its modifications are going to be a bit larger than usual, uh, since, uh, as I said, they're going to be the end of a tree. And because of that, it's going to be a little bit harder to grind out, but you should still be at a decent position uh, when you start grinding it because of the fact that it has, you know, access to that HE right off the bat of the 76mm. Yeah, you won't be able to pen certain things, but those things are few and far between. And also the HEVT, it is good against planes, and I still am on the fence when it comes to its usefulness against other, uh, uh, other ships at this moment in time. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Trigger Hippie, Universe, Conte Baraka, Elove Goat, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Hans, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.